I'd like to welcome everybody to our 2021 Quality Management Division annual meeting. Um, we did not have an annual meeting in 2020, and I was telling Doug earlier, in my recollection, this is the only time I've ever seen us have a virtual open to the entire division quality management annual meeting. We've always had it at a conference before and no way for people who were not at the conference to attend. So it's pretty exciting that anybody who wanted to attend the quality management division meeting this year was uh, able to. I'm very excited about that. We've got a lot of information that we're going to go through pretty quickly for you. So on our agenda, I'm going to do a brief welcome and uh, talk a little bit about the purpose. I'm going to have an update for you. We're going to do 2021 year in review and get into some details with different chairs talking about their um, accomplishments and things that they've done this year. We'll do a financial review and then we uh, have a quality management division award to discuss. And then last but not least, we're going to um, excuse ourselves to virtual networking on Microsoft Teams. So hopefully everyone will have a beverage and potentially a snack and we'll do our own virtual networking reception there. All right, so what's the purpose of this meeting? The purpose is it's to give us an opportunity to showcase the work that the QMD has been doing all year that provides member value to you. It's also an opportunity to give you a sneak peek at what's planned for 2020. This meeting is being recorded and it will be available on my ASQ. So if you want to go back and go over anything or if you've got colleagues who weren't able to attend, they will be able to join. So this is a bit of an eye chart. You've seen it in the quality management division forums in the past, but this just highlights the amazing team of member leaders who support the quality management division and are responsible for bringing all the wonderful things you're going to hear about tonight to you. Um, we've got vice chairs, uh, member leaders is Carol Loveland, our vice chair of marketing and branding, Ellen Quinn, our vice chair of education and webinars and host du jour is Doug Wood and his deputy vice chair is Shoba Mittal. Our vice chair of publications is Sandy Furterer and she's got Dennis Leonard, Dave Roberts and Ashley Hatfield on her team. Our vice chair of conferences and events is Bill Hackett. Our vice chair of students is Stephanie Thompson with um, Alex Tucker and Shringa but uh, I never say her name correctly on our team, uh, on her team. Our vice chair of e-based initiatives is Geneva Bowman. Our vice chair of governance and excellence is Dan Zremiak, and he's got J.D. Marhepko and Claire Elser, Elser on her, his team. We are currently looking for a vice chair of DOC. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, volunteer, how to volunteer later on in the presentation. And then we have seven content management committees, and I'm going to actually let um, Dennis, Dennis is going to be talking about those later. But we've got um, Vin Figfiolino, J.D. Marhevko, Luigi Sie, Aileen Serrano, Jeff Israel, Heather McGrath, Susan Gorbiet, and then we have also a technical committee that is chaired by Grace Duffy. Also heading up this council, like I said before, I'm Peggy Mills, I'm the chair. Our chair-elect is Dennis DeVos. You'll, you'll be hearing from him this evening as well. Our vice chair of finance is Karen imbrosik and our secretary is Michael Hurt. And I'm also very pleased to um, talk about Jerry Rice, who is our past chair. He served as chair the, the two terms prior, two years prior to me. And then we do have our advisory council. We call them our WOW, or Words of Wisdom team. And that's Grace Duffy, Milt, Milt Krivakuka, J.D. Marhefko again, Heather McCain, and Jan Tucker. So many thanks to this team and all the hard work that they've done to bring value and benefit to the members of the Quality Management Division this year and for many years in the past as well. So as we're coming up to the Christmas holiday, the kind of the 12 days of Christmas was going through my mind. Unfortunately, our numbers didn't line up that way. And you're going to hear a lot about this from individuals throughout the night, but I just wanted to kind of highlight um, kind of the 2021 um, numbers as we go along. And some of these you'll see have not quite come out yet because we are just on December 1st. So you've not seen four forums yet. You've only seen three, but the fourth one is on its way. So four forums, 21 webinars, 
14 e-blasts, three quality management body of knowledge video vignettes, five training presentations, a healthcare monograph, a virtual conference, a speaker's list, four collaboration award submissions, seven content management committees, plus a technical committee, all cranking out content, and one face-to-face -face virtual strategic planning meeting. So it's been a busy year for QMD. Just wanted to show you a little bit of our membership. Now, as a bunch of quality professionals, you want to take a look at the scale because at first glance, it looks like a huge drop. But if you go to the membership numbers from a year ago to today, it's really a delta of um, negative 731. So we have 731 less members than we did a year ago out of, you know, 30,000. So it's not as, it doesn't show, tell the same story as the graph. And this just shows you a little bit of a breakdown of where our membership is coming from. You can see how we're doing with fellows, full members, honorary organizations, senior students, and then the total membership. And one thing, um, unfortunately, Dan Zermiak's not going to be here to share his information with you, um, but I will be sharing that, and I'm sure I will not do it justice. You can see that our retention when you get into the higher levels of membership, like senior and fellow, is much higher. So when you look at those benefits that offer those higher level of membership, those, and those members tend to uh, stick around longer. And then you can see the total number that we have of paid. What happens with um, ASQ is they keep members on the roster in an unpaid status for a period of time so that you continue to get information to see if you're going to renew your membership but then eventually you will drop off the list. So without the unpaid who are still getting information, we're at 23,828 members, which is good representation of the quality management community. All right, I'm gonna move into Geneva's slides. So Geneva is our e-based initiative vice chair. So she's responsible for everything electronic, so to speak, with the exception of the webinars. She expanded her team this year. Um, this was a really great idea. She got a, a team member from each of the content management committees. So the content management committees that Dennis is going to talk about that align with the seven areas of the quality management body of knowledge, who are the ones who are bringing to you those wonderful articles, the content on my ASQ, the information in the webinars. She's got a committee member from each of those content management committees working with her on e-based initiatives. And that helps them better understand the needs of the committees and make sure that they get the, the relevant content updated and accurate. I just talked about the reminder from LinkedIn. She launched a new LinkedIn page, and that gives us an avenue to share our events and activities to a wider audience. We do have um, an outreach to not just ASQ members, uh, and they come in and join and see webinars and they can attend conferences and things and hopefully they'll decide to join and become QMD members as well. All of our QMD events are shared on MyASQ, on LinkedIn, and in eBlast. And that would include upcoming webinars, conferences, and any relevant news. We do a minimum of one eBlast per month and then we have new to, top, new to quality topics that are showcased on all the platforms as well. So we get that outreach to people who are new in the quality field and have that resource available for them. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Sandy Perger, who is our Publications Vice Chair. Thanks, Peggy. Uh, let's see. Can I forward the slide? Okay, thank you. All right, so um, like Peggy said, we uh, earlier we have published four quality management division forums this year. Look at all those authors, it's fantastic. I'll just highlight them or, or mention them because I think that anybody that um, spends the time to share their knowledge is fantastic. And, and so we're so pleased to be able to have all of these wonderful authors. Um, some of them uh, work together on some of the articles, but Ron said, Sedlock, and he had two articles this past year. Uh, Dan Zermiak, uh, Nancy Noame, she's also had two articles. Norm Howe, Maxim Protozal from Russia, uh, Grace Duffy, J.D. Marevko, Eric Zink, Marshall Ariza, Don Ringrose, Annabella Pilatus, 
Jorge Roman, Yves von Mullen, Gary Gonkin, uh, I'm sorry, Gorkin, sorry, I uh, wrote that wrong, Pam Smith, and then Kim, Kimberly Watson Hempel. And so you can see uh, pictures of uh, our first three uh, QMD forums this year, and we've got one coming out at the end of December, so you'll see that. Um, Dan Zermiak took over as our book reviewer. Um, we're appreciative to him. Um, I'm the forum, forum editor. We have a wonderful, a wonderful retired English professor from Iowa State, Dave Roberts, who has been helping me. Uh, he's been a rhetorical editor for quite some time, way before I took over, and he's just a wonderful guy, great, great guy to work with. And then, um, as you probably know, our ASQ graphics and publishing department has taken over uh, the, the graphics and the templates and, and getting this to look uh, really fantastic. Um, as it does. So that's all I have. Oh, one more thing. I'll put a plug in for if you do have any articles, please feel free to send them to me. And the information for the call for papers is out on a, uh, my ASQ. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Sandy. Now we're going to go back to Doug, and he's going to update us on education and webinars. Okay, so education webinars uh, has two basic roles. One of them is to educate, the other one is to run webinars. Now, but both of them do education. Uh, first of all, uh, our goal is to provide member value in, in quality management education. We are an ASQ resource. We're not just a QMD resource. So sharing information and protocols on successful webinars has been a part of what we've been doing. This year, we did conduct an information sharing session, and we did record it for future reference. Okay. Uh, we published this book, and Sandy, sorry, this is another publication. I'm, creating, uh, I'm stepping on your toes here. But uh, Sandy and I uh, co-edited the fifth edition of the Certified Quality Manager Quality Organizational Excellence Handbook. But many others did help us. Many of you are here. Uh, some of you may not be. Uh, again, uh, we could not have done it without the aid of these wonderful contributors. And Okay, thank you, Peggy. Uh, so we've held 20 webinars so far in 2021. We've got one more tomorrow. Uh, and, and so far, we've had 37, 11 attendees. Now, we've offered eight of these webinars as singles, and you see their titles listed here, okay? Uh, again, a variety of subjects. Uh, but some of them, go ahead, Peggy, uh, were, were multiples, okay? For instance, uh, with Eileen, Eileen's help, uh, we did a PDCA approach for transforming culture in English and in Spanish. Uh, we applied leading indicators, uh, cost equality, in a two-part series. Uh, that was uh, by uh, Guillermo Ciudad. Uh, um, we did a three vital questions uh, series, but we also finished off our 18-part series that started last year by uh, Dr. Greg Watson. Okay, with his uh, some of these titles are a little bit. Uh, Okay, so, so they're sort of overarching. Quality for our manifest destiny was, was one of them. Uh, if you want to go to the YouTube site uh, and you have your cell phone, you can take a picture of that, that QR code. It'll take you to our Q, YouTube site. Uh, okay, next. <clears throat> I was going to pause for just a second to see if anyone wanted to get that picture, Doug. Oh, sure. Yeah, give them a chance to snap that or capture that. QR codes make it easier to find things. Okay. So um, <clears throat> we also made four short videos uh, to make the most of my ASQ. As my ASQ develops and more people join it, we figured people would need a help to get in. And so again, uh, we in my ASQ we have these four short videos where this QR code is taking you. Um, the the thing is that these QR code, the, these short videos, 
tell you how to use my ASQ and get the most out of it. So, okay. We've also been making some short videos for general quality management knowledge. So we made two of them so far this year. One was on training and development, basically an introduction to CMC section seven, uh, training and development. Talks about what they do and how you can support them. We've got another one that Grace Duffy helped put together. Uh, this is a joint QMD and healthcare division, uh, quality improvement committee, and explains what the committee does and how it works. Okay, we've got two more planned in the next four weeks, so we'll see if we can squeeze them in before the end of the year. Okay, and now to Dan. Thanks so much, Doug. That was great. Um, what your team does is, is just amazing, and, and I love the outreach and the number of attendees that we've had this year to participate in these events. All right, I, like I said before, I'm sure I'm not going to do Dan's slides justice here, but he's been working on, with his team, a QMD excellence model that's based on the Baldridge framework, um, and it's adapted to the QMD scope. For example, the customers would be ASQ members. So the modifications are ongoing to align with ASQ headquarters and ASQ Technical Communities Council changes that they're making to society policies, procedures, rule descriptions, and the approval authority matrices. Additionally, he's been working on roles, responsibilities, processes, and records. He's been reviewing and aligning our QMD roles to current ASQ role descriptions, streamlining and simplifying current practices, removing obsolete tasks that wound up being centralized at ASQ headquarters, and then deploying ASQ records management practices and durations to our QMD artifacts using ASQ information technology resources. Another thing that Dan's really been active with this year, and you've heard his presentation at the quality management conference if you attended, but he's been working on a membership upgrade campaign. And he's done lots of data and research, and he's really been targeting professional members to encourage them to upgrade to the senior membership level. And he's used um, campaigns, and we've got some random drawings coming up for prizes to um, encourage those who have upgraded their membership to senior. He's noticed that you can increase member satisfaction and retention, incremental increase of 30% retention rate at the ASQ senior member tier. And also, he wants people to be aware of the um, what's eligible in terms of perks, discounts, benefits, and potential recognition that you can get as a senior member. So he has been letting us know that, you know, hey, you can cover recover the cost of your ASQ membership if you upgrade and take advantage of the op options that are out there for those levels of membership. So if you've got any questions or would love to chat with Dan more about that or get more information or go ahead and um, submit an application to upgrade to senior and then be eligible in our next drawing before the end of the year even, that would be wonderful. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to Ellen Quinn, who's our Vice Chair of Marketing and Branding. And we have her to thank for the uh, lovely branding and consistency within these slides tonight. Thanks, Peggy. Are you going to drive the slides for me? or? Great, thanks. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, if you don't know me, maybe you've seen me at uh, World Conference. Well, not recently, but um, my role, we, I do the help with the booth at the uh, World Conference. Um, my, like Peggy was saying, I make sure all our handouts, everything, were branded correctly, have the right logo, the right look, consistent. Um, some of the other things I've been working on is uh, collaborating with the Society of Women Engineers, um, and next year I'll be taking on a new role, so I've been tra transitioning my current role to our new VC. And um, I'm also, because uh, I'm a big advocate of our uh, booth at, in the exhibit hall at World Conference, um, I've been working with all the other um, TCs and divisions on uh, working all together for, hopefully next year we'll be all in person. And um, I was also the co-chair along with Doug Wood uh, for the virtual conference this year, the committee. Hopefully you had a chance to attend that. 
It was really excellent. So next slide. So leading into that, this is actually some of the, um, uh, the marketing from that. And it uh, looks like that one uh, icon got covered over, but that's okay. It was our first virtual conference, and I thought it was a, a real success. It was real member value. And we had three tracks, 21 speakers. Uh, we had 15 committee members and 13 moderators. Uh, and a special thank you goes to our, our keynote, the fabulous keynote speakers, JD, uh, Denise, and Nicole. And many of our, our QMD um, council members were also speakers. And a big thank to, thanks to them as well. So I think that was my last slide, Peggy. It was. Thank you very much, Ellen. Welcome. And Ellen and Doug did a great job leading the team, working jointly with the software division to put on an amazing virtual conference. Um, couldn't, couldn't be more proud of the job that they did this year. All right. Do we have Carol Loveland, our vice chair of member leaders? Sorry, the video is too dark. Let me put the light on. Hi, everybody. I'm new as the member leader, vice chair. So I'm trying to do some things so that as people are interested and maybe volunteering, uh, some of the things you can see on here is I'm building an onboarding packet for new member leaders. And also that way people can look at if you're thinking about maybe volunteering for a job, you can, you'll be able to go on my ASQ, go into the SharePoint and look these up to see, oh, that's what this job is. Here's the responsibilities I'd have. Also trying to build a standard work library for each member leader. I'm going to be um, I'm working on developing the QMD research credits for member leaders, devising the QMD awards procedure, which I worked on last weekend, so it's coming along, and then recruiting volunteers. So trying to get the rest of you that might think about doing this, hey, you know, I should do this for a couple of years and, and get interested and get active with it. So if you are interested, there's my email and you can contact me, and I have plenty of information to try and share with you. Excellent. Thanks, Carol. And uh, actually, you know what? I want to go back up to put that, put Carol's email address back out there again, even though these slides are going to be out there. Um, I'm hoping by now you guys are getting a sense of, you know, just how much is going on, maybe in, for some of you behind the scenes, and how, you know, it's kind of sometimes like ducks on the water, right? They just kind of look smooth along the water, but the little feet are going crazy underneath the water level. Um, we have, an, again, an, an amazing team of member leaders on the Quality Management Division. And, you know, those stats that I was showing you before and that you've heard on subsequent slides, that would not be possible without that group. And we are always looking for more and more volunteers at, at any level. And, and Carol and I have talked, and she can attest, but, you know, it, it's not a one-size-fits-all. If, you if you've got one hour a week or one hour a month, we'll find a place that, you know, you can fit in if you're retiring and you want, you're looking for your next thing that's volunteer work and you want to put in 20 hours a week, well, we've got something for you as well. So areas of interest, time commitment, um, that's, that's one of the things, Carol, you can, you can tell her, her personality and she's great at working with um, potential member leaders to, to find a good fit for you. In your it's a great, it's a great team to work with. So you'll, you'll learn and you'll grow and you'll have fun with us. Absolutely. Okay. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Dennis. Dennis is going to talk about our seven content management committees and our one technical committee. There's a lot of information sharing in here, so take it away, Dennis. Just let me know when you're ready to advance your slides because I know you've got a lot to share. Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our, our uh, official annual general meeting. And uh, but before I continue, I want to introduce myself, uh, Dennis DeVos. I'm the incoming chair, so I'm taking over the reins from, from Peggy here uh, in the new year. So what is that? One month from today, uh, I will be the new chair. So, so on behalf of, of myself and, and, and the whole team, um, I want to welcome everybody. And I want to echo Carol's comments when I say, please uh, look at this 
uh, as an opportunity to get involved. Uh, we're always looking for new members, and as I talk for the next few minutes about our content management committees, this very often is where uh, new volunteers, like, like all of you here on the call tonight, uh, can begin to get involved and get your feet wet and, and decide, you know, how much or, or perhaps how little you want to be involved with the quality management division. The, the, the content management committees over the last several years have really been sort of our, um, our farm team, if you will, uh, for people to learn more about the quality management division, learn more about ASQ, and then, and then progress into, into different roles on our executive committee. So please, um, please uh, take a look at what we're offering here in the next few slides, see what you like, and by all means, please reach out to myself or Carol or anyone on our team to volunteer. So Peggy, please advance the slide. As Peggy said, we have seven content management committees, and, and they're set up according to the seven areas of our, our body of knowledge in the Quality Management Division, CMQOE uh, body of knowledge. There's an additional eighth committee headed by uh, Grace Duffy that liaisons with the Healthcare Division, and it's, and it's focused on the special topics related to equality in healthcare. So the CMCs are comprised of subject matter experts, and each of our seven plus one CMCs is responsible for soliciting, reviewing, and approving quality management division content, managing content in the QMD community on MyASQ, serving as subject matter experts for peer reviews, developing and reviewing training material in collaboration with our QMD education folks, in including the webinars that you heard Doug talk about a few minutes ago. Collaborating on delivering QMD-sponsored webinars. We really look at the CMCs um, as, as fertile ground for folks to, uh, to create or at least channel in webinars from, from outside of QMD. Our CMCs develop content, including articles that can be in our QMD forum, they can be in our, in our monthly e-blasts, developing contents for books, contributing to the CMQOE exam handbook, for example, training materials, tools, partnering with related ASQ technical communities where appropriate. It's important that quality management division Although we're the largest division, we want to make sure that we aren't insular, not unto ourselves, but are always looking out um, to partner with, mentor, learn from other divisions too. So there's a great opportunity for liais liaison with, with other technical committees within QMD and uh, the wider divisions within the ASQ. Also, we represent uh, quality management division at conferences. And if any of you, whether you join a CMC or not, any of you on the call are interested in presenting at conferences, either virtually or live, including the World Conference, let us know. And we, we often sponsor and support your content and work with you to make that happen. In addition to just creating content, we also curate content. One of the big successes we had this year was working on um, gathering already existing information and knowledge that we then were able to, to kind of curate and plug into the seven uh, subject matter areas within my ASQ. So if you feel like you want to volunteer but you're not sure that you want to write any articles, uh, there's a lot more to it than that. We also go out and, and, and gather existing knowledge from within ASQ and, and even from without. So, so our, our content management committees are, are not just content generators, but more that content curators. So I encourage you, as we talk for the next few minutes, think about whether or not there might be a place for you on one of these seven committees. Peggy, next slide, please. Like we said, the 
content that we develop and curate is developed in numerous ways. The forum, the webinars, conferences, YouTube, training classes, um, creating one-page uh, learning notes for tools, our monthly e-blast, etc. I'll go through very quickly our seven plus one content management committees aligned with our body of knowledge. The, the first CMC is, is based on leadership led by Venanzio Figliolino. Uh, we're fortunate that Venanzio is our first CMC leader from outside of North America. He lives in Italy, so we welcomed Venanzio this year to the chair of that committee. Strategic Planning, Development and Deployment, JD is the chair of that, of that CMC, and she's on the call tonight. We're happy to have JD with us. Management Elements and Methods, Luigi Sile from Puerto Rico. Quality Management Tools, Eileen Serrano. Customer-focused organizations, Jeff Israel. Supply Chain Management, led by Heather McCain, who's also on the call. We welcome Heather tonight. Training and Development, Susan Gorvet leads that CMC. She's on the call tonight. We're happy to have her with us. And Grace Duffy, who has our Special Healthcare Quality and Improvement Committee uh, jointly with the Healthcare Division. Grace is with us tonight, too. So welcome to, to those of you on the call, and thank you for all of the hard work that you've been, been doing for us this past year. Peggy, go ahead. This is JD's uh, committee, the Strategic Planning, Development, Deployment. There's a lot in this slide, but I just want to say in summary that JD's committee is, is unique in the fact that it involves and includes uh, members from outside of ASQ and reaches out in, in a particular way uh, to stakeholders and audiences outside of ASQ in, in a way that, uh, that we all, I think, can learn from. This slide talks about a collaboration between her committee and the um, International Finance and Governance Society, the IMA. Uh, this collaboration has been going on for nine years. And if you look at that pie chart in the, in the upper right corner, it talks about uh, 650,000 individuals uh, receiving our content. The green, about a third of that content goes out to the QMD. Another third or so goes out to ASQ partners. But then you'll see in blue how they've been so successful in reaching out with their content external to ASQ. And I think there's lessons in there that, that all of us can learn uh, as well. The, the chart at the bottom just talks about these number of, of touch points, the number of ways that the group has been reaching out to folks over the last several years in terms of books, articles, face-to-face, -face, webinars. Um, we know that touch points are important. The more we reach out to folks within ASQ, the more satisfaction they have with the society and the higher their level of involvement and retention. Reaching people touch points outside of ASQ also encourages them to get involved and join ASQ. So that's really the uh, a singular success of this group over the past several years. You see the chart at the bottom there actually tracks from the year 2014 through this year, 2021. So kudos to that group. They've just been doing an outstanding job. Next slide, please. This is just a, a chart associated with some of the success of, of the group. We, we won't talk about it specifically, uh, but just talking about the 153 unique touch points, reaching out again, like I said, to 650,000 individuals. It's just been outstanding the amount of outreach that this group has done and the amount of uh, collaboration they've been able to achieve. Next slide, please. This is the uh, customer-focused uh, organizations group led by Jeff Israel. And this past year, uh, they were able to bring their membership on that committee up from two to five contributors. Uh, they held uh, meetings virtually with their team about every two months uh, using Zoom. And like I said, worked on mapping uh, their content to the body of knowledge areas in my ASQ. 
there's another uh, CFO customer focused organizations webinar scheduled for January the 12th, so about six weeks from now. Mark your calendars and uh, join us for that webinar. 2022 goals for this group is to continue to add uh, content associated with customer focus to my ASQ for their topics. Next slide, please. Susan's uh, Training and Development Committee. Uh, Susan's done a great job uh, soliciting and, and bringing new, new members onto her team. You see there are 10 members there, including uh, two past chairs of the QMD, Grace and Milt, and uh, her and her team have just been doing an outstanding job. The team was very busy through this year, creating content, sharing content, uh, and, and having meetings just about every month. Three ASQ section meeting presentations to local sections. A quality progress article, congratulations on that. Those are, those are hard to achieve. Several graphic handout examples for conferences, et cetera. Six ASQ conference presentations, including one at the World Conference this year. A video vignette. Four webinars. Two quality management division forum articles. And then, of course, uh, reaching out, being active in my ASQ and answering questions and leading discussions on the platform. And we appreciate that outreach as well. Three other conference presentations. Uh, one of Susan's group's singular achievement was the creation of a speaker's list that now we are sharing with the wider organization. So if any of you on the call, perhaps at your local monthly meetings in the sections, are looking for conference uh, subject matter experts to speak, uh, reach out to Susan uh, or any of us to get access to that list. And if you're looking for people who speak about ISO 9001 or Lean or Six Sigma, whatever your topics are, uh, we, have, we have subject matter experts on that list who are willing and, and very effective speakers and they can come out and share with you at your, at your section level. Next slide, please. Peggy, can we have the next slide? Oh, there it is. Healthcare uh, Quality uh, Committee. And uh, Grace Duffy has been, been at this for, for many, many years, chairing this committee, this, this joint venture between the QMD and the healthcare uh, di division. This is a team of senior healthcare practitioners working through ASQ who represent the society's healthcare and quality management divisions. Grace from QMD co-chairs this committee with uh, Pure Story from the Healthcare Division. And uh, they've been working on the following objectives, to drive thought leadership and excellence through quality regarding healthcare, delivering more tailored content and solutions to the global healthcare community, improving the individual ASQ member experience for healthcare practitioners, instituting best practices in healthcare cultures and operations, and building this committee as a community, uh, a place to vet and share ideas, engage and create value, build capability to sustain quality in healthcare. Next slide, please. Throughout the year, uh, they've engaged a rotating team of 25 plus senior healthcare and quality professionals. And like it's been 12 years, like I said, Grace has been involved in this a long time. So this committee has been active in one way or another over the past 12 years. In my view, their, their most important singular achievement was their quality management system model for healthcare. So bringing quality management concepts, think ISO 9001, to healthcare, hospitals, et cetera, et cetera. They wrote and published four monographs in a series that describes this quality management model, provides an assessment tool for improvement, shares the tools to support 10 quality system elements within the quality management system for, for healthcare, and illustrating case studies for each of those um, quality system elements, the 10 system elements. The group has presented papers and sessions on quality in healthcare at ASQ and healthcare related conferences including this healthcare model and its tools, publishing papers in ASQ and healthcare journals, and working at the forefront to innovate 
healthcare quality management topics. They also have just proposed this uh, model to the American National Standards, ANSI, um, to be a national um, quality management system model, and, and we're keeping our fingers crossed that that gets, uh, that gets approved at the ANSI level. Next, the next slide, please. I won't read each of these uh, out, but our goals for 2022 and beyond are really to promote that distribution of, of, of the healthcare monograph series, engage uh, healthcare quality members, and, and get this monograph and get this new proposed ANSI standard really out there, published, publicized, and, and her helping that it, uh, that it gains traction. Next slide, please. Okay, over to you. Thanks, Peggy. Thank you, Dennis, for giving us an update on some of the amazing activities of the CMCs this year. Um, I love that you touched on the fact that the CMCs are where the content is coming from, right? A lot of us that spoke at the beginning are delivering that content either through webinars or through forum articles or, through, you know, on my ASQ and in the eblast. But, you know, these are, as Jerry Rice dubbed it, the, the rock stars rock stars who are coming up with all this content and, and bringing it to us and, like Dennis said, creating and curating it. So we we really appreciate that. I mean, where would we be without that member value? So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Karen to give us an update on our financials. Hi, everyone. I'm Karen ambrosic tolf and I'm the Vice Chair of Finances. So in order for us to do all of the really neat things that you've heard, we need to have money in order to support uh, many of these. So what we do is the year prior, so last year in third and fourth quarter, we got together and determined what our um, goals would be and what financials, how much money we would need in order to do each one of those. Those, that budget then had to be sent up to the Technical um, Committee's Council to be approved. So they then looked at all of the activities that we wanted to do to make sure that it met the requirements of what ASQ is looking to move forward. And then they gave us the money that we asked for for each of those activities. So Peggy, can you move to the slide, please? So as part of this, you can see at the top part of the table, um, we had asked for, we had, as part of our plan, we had both revenue and expense built in. Um, our expense was $51,325, and we had, we were expecting a revenue of $40,850, and you can see to the right of that what our actuals are year to date. We didn't quite meet what we were expecting for revenue, but you can also see for the expenses so far as of December 1st, we have not spent all of the money we had originally asked for either. Um, so if you look at that detail and where we were, we were expecting our revenue to come from four different areas. Um, much of it is from the virtual conference that we had done. So you can see the conference revenue, we had estimated we would get about 31,600 from that. Um, as of right now, we've got 6,050. Uh, we had royalties, and there were some changes as part of ASQ as to how royalties would be paid to the divisions. We had budgeted for $7,500. Um, as of last week, we had gotten $4,249 and some cents. And then we also had some sponsorship and exhibit revenue that we had anticipated from the conference that we did not see. Um, that was basically for just under $2,000. Now, when you look at it for the expense, you can see that what Sandy had talked about with the Publish for Forums, what Doug had talked about for the Provide the Webinars, because we have to have the phone lines for that, um, all the expenses for the virtual conference, uh, the Voice of the Customer Strategy, um, awards for the ASQ upgrades, uh, member leader recognition, um, and then the, the 2022 strategic planning meeting, which is looking at what those goals are going to be for 2022 and what kind of financials we'll need for next year, because those are currently 
being reviewed by the ASQ uh, TCC, and we should be hearing back from them uh, next week as to what we get approved for next year. And then we had also planned to have um, two of the member leaders attend the TCC meetings in person, but with everything that's still going on with uh, COVID, those didn't happen. So when you look at where we actually spent money so far, um, we've spent almost all of our money for the four forums, and I believe we're done um, there. Uh, the webinar, there was a change in how the phones are paid for as part of it, so we use ASQ uh, provided tools, which dropped that for us. Um, the virtual conference, we were able to do that much cheaper than we had anticipated by about um, a third less. Then we have some where we're still looking at uh, the VOC strategy, the ASQ um, upgrade awards, and then the member leader recognition. Those are still pending for later this month. And then you can see that the 2022 strategic planning meeting was actually higher than what we had budgeted. And the reason for this is that when it was originally budgeted, it was only budgeted for, I believe it was five people to attend. And we were given approval, as well as the additional funding from uh, the TCC in order to have additional people attend that strategic planning meeting, because as you saw when Peggy showed um, all the volunteers that we have, in order for us to put together a good plan and get good financials, we need to have more than five member leaders together in a room. Um, we did also have some meetings where we met virtually, but we find that it's much more conducive and we get much farther when we can actually sit and talk about ideas in person. So that was higher than anticipated. And then you can see what our expenses were um, for the year. So we had the $40,591.15 is what we spent so far. Um, our revenue came to $10,299.31. So that's all, Peggy. Excellent. Thank you so much, Karen, for sharing all that financial information with us. All right, now the most exciting part of the evening for me is I get to talk about awards. So I'm I'm pleased to report that the Quality Management Division received the Bronze Award for Recognition in 2020. Now, this, these are the new awards that they've done through the Performance Excellence Program or the PEP program. And what we were measured on were our contributions to ASQ thought leadership as measured by my ASQ content posting based on member engagement and experience. And they measured that by my ASQ activity and member increases our fiduciary responsibility as measured by our, our adherence to our budget, and then our achievement of our business plan objectives, and that was measured by our self-reported progress on our business, uh, business goals and targets. Karen shared with you how each year we develop the business plan and the budget, and that's what we submit, and we monitor and measure ourselves to that throughout the year. So one thing I can tell you is the program was new, we are the largest division, as it's been mentioned here, and some of the measures were based on um, increases. And so since we had already kind of been a, um, a trendsetter and getting out there and getting a lot of content posted on my ASQ, our, our change in content was not as high as um, some of the thresholds for the award. So it actually worked against us. So. I can tell you that I, for one, and I, I think the QMD Council members would echo this, we weren't happy with bronze. We were happy that we got an award, but we definitely uh, are striving for gold, and we're definitely striving for gold this year and beyond. And But we need your help in doing that. Again, it, you see all these measures here in terms of member activity. So we need members engaged and members talking on my ASQ and sharing information, and we need um, content management committee members and division members posting information out there and sharing it. So um, please stay involved and engaged, and I encourage you to, uh, you know, even up that engagement. So I also have some awards. So we have 
Carol just talked to you about the awards procedure and she's revising that so that we can make some changes to the awards that we're giving out for our 2021 year. But what I'm doing now is I'm talking about the awards that were actually voted on and identified in 2020, but, and we would have had a, our face-to-face -face annual meeting at World Conference had it not gone virtual. So these would have been awarded actually back in May. So again, we'll have 2020, 2021 awards coming very soon, but these are going all the way back to 2020. And so it's, it's my, my privilege and my pleasure to get to identify and recognize these individuals for the outstanding contributions that they have made. So the first one is the individual award. And this award is given in recognition of those who have provided valuable volunteer service to QMD, and that could be either as an officer, a committee chair, a committee member, or someone who's appointed to work on an individual product, project, or service that's of benefit to the QMD members. And I am pleased to tell you that we have Drum roll. 10 of these individual awards that are given for 2020. Now these individuals should not have known that until just now when I popped up this slide. So I would like to recognize Bill Craddock, Dennis DeVos, Grace Duffy, Susan Gorbiet, Jeff Israel, Tim King, J.D. Marhevko, Heather McCain, Aileen Serrano, and Joe Wojniak. And they are being recognized for their help with the prodigious effort of editing the fifth edition of the Certified Manager of Quality and Organizational Excellence Handbook. Their willingness to contribute to this effort will be appreciated by all those who purchase and use this book in the pursuit of better quality management and better tomorrow. So please join me in congratulating, I know we can't hear everyone class, but congratulating these 10, Bill, Dennis, Grace, Susan, Jeff, Tim, JD, Heather, Aileen, and Joe for all of their efforts in contributing to that, to that book. Great job. All right, and they will be receiving their awards in the mail. All right, so now we're gonna go on to the Outstanding Service Award. And this award is given in recognition of those demonstrating outstanding volunteer service, and again, either as a QMD officer, a committee chair, a committee member, or an appointee that works on an individual product or product, project product or service that's of benefit to QMD members. And I have three of these to give out. Our first one is for Dr. Greg Watson. He is receiving the Outstanding Service Award, and I'm sure you can guess it because Doug even mentioned it before, in recognition, in recognition of his enormous contributions to QMD's educational efforts. His 18-part webinar was widely received and sets a high bar for webinar participation and content with his wide-ranging, provocative, and visionary presentations. So thank you very much and congratulations to Greg Watson for those 18 wonderful webinars. Our next Outstanding Service Award goes to Dr. Sandy Ferger and Doug Wood. And as you heard, they were the co-editors of the Certified Manager of CMQOE Fifth Edition Handbook. So they are being recognized for their outstanding work as co-editors of the Fifth Edition of the CMQOE Handbook. And again, this was a prodigious effort that will be appreciated by all those who purchased and used this book in the pursuit of better quality management and better tomorrow. And this is well-deserved. They did an amazing job, and I'm gonna tell you that they had to, the challenges that the two of these faced and some of the authors during the process, it was when ASQE was being formed and we were transitioning from um, working with just ASQ and having the additional organization and having requirements for um, agreements that they had not had to work with before. So they certainly did a yeoman's work um, of circumnavigating the situation and getting us through to a successful and excellent published work. There's somebody else on the call I would be remiss if I didn't recognize, and that 
is with our past chair award. And this award is given in recognition of those demonstrating outstanding volunteer service to QMD as chair of the division. And it's given after completion of two successful terms as chair of the division. And yes, I know no drum roll needed here. Our past chair award is given to Jerry Rice in recognition of his outstanding volunteer service to QMD as chair of the division. His selfless leadership and commitment to members of the QMD is exemplary. And I can tell you he definitely left very big shoes for me to try and fill these past two years. And he has been an amazing past chair as well and an instrumental person to many of our efforts, but he definitely has uh, found a, a good home, I think, on the e-based initiative team with Geneva. By the way, I love all the comments in the chat and you guys are cheering everybody on as you go. So congratulations to Jerry. And I have one more award to give out this evening, and that's our Howard Jones Award. And this award is QMD's highest individual honor, and it's given in recognition of outstanding long-term service and leadership resulting in substantial progress toward the fulfillment of our division's programs and goals. And I am pleased to announce that our Howard jo Jones Award is being awarded to Ellen Quinn. And this is being awarded to Ellen in recognition of her outstanding long-term service as the Vice Chair of Marketing. Her efforts have generated wonderful division collateral and have been instrumental in the division successfully exhibiting at numerous conferences. So again, kudos to Ellen, Jerry, Dr. Watson, Dr. Furter, Doug Wood, and the 10 contributors. I don't know if I could get all of them. Susan, Tim, JD, Dennis, I'm not going to remember all of them by, name, by heart. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but thank you so much for everything that you've done. The check is not in the mail, but the award will definitely be in the mail. And I appreciate all the support that you've, that you've given. All right. So a little sneak peek into my, my last chair's message. Um, what comes next? You'll see me. You'll see me mention that in my my chair's message in the last forum. So, what comes next from QMD? More great quality content. You're going to see that in the term of forums, webinars, e-blasts, content on my ASQ, quality management, body of knowledge, video vignettes, and conferences, just to name a few. And yes, World Conference in May, and the QMD conference potentially in June is what we're talking about. So I just want to tell you that probably one of the saddest parts for me as being chair for these past two years was that COVID made us go virtual. And that was, that was definitely a, a difficult thing that I did not get to attend any world conferences in person and network um, with you guys. It was really, um, one of the highlights of my year was to get to go to World Conference and walk around and meet people in sessions and at the booth and, you know, in the halls as we're going between sessions or, you know, having a, a, a outside gathering while we're there. So I really appreciate that and I'm, I really miss that, but I do hope to see everybody at World Conference in May. So I'd like to thank everybody for attending tonight. We had, um, you will receive 0.1 RUs per hour for attending, and we are right at 59 minutes right now. So right at the one hour mark. But in the spirit of networking and um, host, spending time with everybody, we do have a team meeting set up that we can have a virtual networking and open it there. But before we switch that, if there's any questions anyone wants to, to sit in the chat that we can address before we go to a more informal setting, please 
share those with us. I keep an eye on it as we've gone. I've seen comments, but I really haven't seen any questions. And no, Peggy, there have not been any Q&A postings uh, other than just one. Uh, but <clears throat> I, I suppose uh, we can uh, we can do a couple of questions here and then move on to the team session where additional questions can be asked and answered. Absolutely. Hey, Peggy and Doug, this is Dennis. The um, I think if I take a picture of this QR code, I'll be joining the meeting on my phone. Can we put the link maybe in the chat so we can cut and paste it into our web browsers? Oh, yes, yes. I I have it right here, and uh, I, I didn't do that. There's the link in the chat window now. You can go and copy and paste it from there. Super. Thanks. So obviously we couldn't send you guys all um, beverages and snacks in the mail for the meeting, but feel free. We're going to keep it open another couple minutes and see if there's any questions, and then give everybody an opportunity to join the team session. I have to launch it, um, but get on the team session and feel free to chat and enjoy a beverage or a, a snack and talk to everybody and ask questions. And one of the things I was hoping that people might be willing to share tonight is how did you celebrate World Quality Month? I'm always looking to benchmark and see what other people are doing to celebrate World, World Quality Month. So be thinking about that on your, as you transition from one session to the next. All right. We'll so, right now, trying to get linked up. And, and please, if, if you're new or newer to, to our QMD, please, we extend a special invitation to you. We'd love to see you and meet you and talk to you. <clears throat> That's what this next uh, little bit of social hour is all about. Exactly. All right, well, one thing I've noticed is that this team is definitely um, not shy in general, so the fact that there are no questions or answers in the chat box, I'm going to take as there no one has questions, at least for this venue. So we'll do a going one, going twice. Um, Doug, can we leave the WebEx up for just a few minutes while people get an opportunity to switch over to make sure they properly copied the chat? Or yes, certainly. We'll, we'll leave the slide up here. I'm going to turn off the record, though. Okay, perfect. Thank you.